This is Sam Kirby, host of Cinema Stories. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Rachel Mullins, host of Hashtag No Filter Friday here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my new show, Hashtag No Filter Friday, where we talk about all of the sexual misconduct allegations swirling around Hollywood. A new show drops every Friday at 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Hashtag No Filter Friday. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Throughout history, the course of sports has been shaped by one thing, the fans. From the moments you never dreamed of. To the moments that still give you nightmares. Behind the band. Super Bowl! Brady has his fifth! Through the good and the bad, fans have helped change the games we watch and the players we love. They may not be the most logical people. You are a factory of sadness! I'll see you Sunday. But they know their teams better than anybody. They'll blow in the ninth! You may not always see them, but you know where to find them. After all, there's nothing quite like the view from the cheap seats. Broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Grab a chair and enjoy all there is in The, the Cheap, Cheap Seats. Oh, it's beautiful up here, isn't it? It is so nice up here in The Cheap Seats. It's just a fun place to be. It's where we can yell rain down booze or cheers or anything we feel like from all the way up here because let's be honest the guys we're yelling at can't get to us so that's that's the nice part about <laughs> well, being all the way ron, up here ron our tested christian ron our tested <laughs> i don't know how cheap those seats were but uh no anyway. that's true they were not cheap at all <laughs> anyway he's john lauder i'm christian i will welcome in the cheap seats here on this monday april 30th 2018 so happy to have you along here with us on the public house media network however you may be listening and wherever you may be listening as as the schmooze used to say um, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spreaker.com, of course, thephmedia.com, where you can get some awesome cheap seats gear, a coffee mug, a T-shirt, a hat, socks if you really, really want them. So, Snuggies. Uh, snuggies, yeah, snuggies, <laughs> you know, maybe even a ticket to, you know, game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals in Toronto where the Cavaliers will be playing. That's right. Despite so many people going against them and immediately counting them out and just John I've never like this is this is unbelievable I've never felt more emotionally drained after a first round series that didn't include my team this was on because just from having to talk about it on a weekly basis you and I it, this series between Cleveland and Indiana was emotionally and mentally draining yeah, it was ridiculous. And real quick, just a uh, shout out to uh, Ryan Pierce that did a nice job filling in for me last week. He did. Week. Very, uh, very nice to have Ryan on last week. Good to have you back, though, yeah. bud. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was uh, last weekend was not fun, but anyway, you guys did a nice job. But yeah, th- this Cavaliers team is just oh god, they're so frustrating to watch. <laughs> uh, you know, I, after the the halfway point of the season when they they traded for all these new pieces and you know the whole Kyrie leaving before the season. Mm-hmm. It, you just it ends up being the same thing over and over and over again it's just lebron with a bunch of schlubs and the first player ever to have 45 points two different times in a game seven 10 years apart mind you the last time was against your celtics back in 2008 yeah um, i mean he really is on a different level as much as i'm a jordan guy and i'll never be a lebron guy you'd be blind deaf and dumb to not uh see just how incredible lebron james is but i this series should not have gone seven games, and that's a credit to the Pacers and and not a credit to the Cavaliers because Ty Lue was so desperate for something, he decided to start the only four players on the team from the 2016 championship team yeah. and Kyle Korver. And he actually played Tristan Thompson, who never plays and is more famous now for having a baby with a Kardashian. So right. <laughs> um, this is where we're at with the Cavaliers. But 
great series for Indiana, just came up short, and I, I still can't believe it won seven games. Yeah. And the fact that uh, Cleveland only won by a couple of points in a seventh game, I, I just never right. would have thought that would happen to a LeBron James team in the first round ever. It, it was crazy. Well, so so he's now thirteen and zero all time in uh, those in first round matchups, and the fact that he did right. this and was able to do so, he had forty game uh, forty points in three of these games, which was insane yeah. to think about, and played almost every minute. I mean, he barely ever sat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like it, it that just shows you how important he is to this team this year. I was reading an article prior to Game Seven that was talking about how this might be LeBron's most impressive playoff series ever in his entire yeah. career. Uh, it was on ESPN. Micah Adams did some really good stuff. Um, and if you uh, – I don't know if you had a chance to read it at all, but there's this stat called um, – oh, what is it? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find it now, and I can't. Um, like, complete box score or something like that. Like, it takes into account everything. And LeBron had, like – Going into Game Seven, like thirty point eight, which was highest only to, of course, Michael Jordan um, in a in a seven game series ever in one seven game series. The next highest guy on Cleveland was like Tristan Thompson to like six point seven. You know, yeah, and, and, I, and literally, it I, takes into account I, everything. Like he literally, it for the first time, I, and honestly, we can say this about LeBron James, and this will, argue, John, you and I could have an argument about this for you know years. But this is my argument in favor of LeBron James when it comes down to the Jordan you know, comparison. Take out Miami. You take out those four years in Miami where he won a couple of his first two championships. LeBron has yet to actually play other than Kyrie. So you take out Miami and Kyrie. He hasn't played with great talent around him. And that is a certainly a thousand percent true in this year. This might be the worst Cavaliers team since his first trip to the finals when they got dominated by the Spurs. That's true. However, he's the one making all the moves. Right, he's exactly. One, so, you know, a lot of this is his doing. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, he, he rarely, if ever, has truly great talent. I don't understand what the deal is with Kevin Love. I mean... Oh, my God. He's such a weird basketball player. I mean, there this are moments where... This is a guy who's averaging 33 and 16 in Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, I, th- there are moments where he just looks like a top 10 player in the league. And then there are moments where he looks like Luke Walton. I mean, I, he's just such yeah. a weird basketball player. I mean, the fact that George Hill was the only other player to really mm-hmm. bring anything to the table in this series for Cleveland is terrifying. And he had back spasms. I mean, he's an older guy. So, yeah. I mean, you know, if they were playing anybody other than Toronto, I'd be concerned if I was a Cleveland fan, but yeah, it's Toronto. So, yeah, yeah. um, I don't know, but Indiana played really well. I mean, Victor Oladipo is, is a beast. Uh, you want to talk about a guy with a chip on his shoulder? Yeah, like yeah. Oladipo. Turner, I mean, they've got some yeah. good players. They they really do. And I mean, like I'm, I'm looking at the box score from Game Seven, and LeBron, as we mentioned, 45 points, nine rebounds, seven assists, four steals. By the way, he became the all time playoff steals leader, just adding to his insane resume uh, in in the postseason. Um, yeah, but pass, I mean. Pass. You, Pass my boy Scotty Pippen there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and and but you mentioned Kevin Love, and the start of that fourth quarter, he had 14 points uh, in the game. Eight of them came in the first six minutes of the fourth quarter. He was insane. He hit two monster threes in that fourth quarter uh, yesterday to help extend the lead. And Cleveland, of course, holding on uh, for that 105-101 victory yesterday. But I mean, I, I watched that. Watched the whole game through. First quarter, it looked as though Cleveland was going to dominate, just run away yeah. with it. And it was like, okay, yeah. LeBron actually woke up. The guys are all going to be behind him. And then the third quarter hit, and it was like, uh, what happened? And then, here's the amazing part. The fourth quarter was with Le- without LeBron, too, and they were able to keep everybody at bay. That that was what was amazing. It was like, all of a sudden, in that fourth quarter yesterday, you saw exactly how the, the Cavaliers should have been the entire season long. LeBron wasn't on the floor. It was the first time he came off the floor late in the third quarter because uh, he was getting cramps in his legs, and it didn't matter. You know, Kyle Korver played well. George Hill was was solid. Kevin Love was hitting threes. Like This was insane to look at in that last maybe 15 minutes of the game. Yeah, uh, but again... 15 minutes, not 48, yeah. oh, I know. not over I know. the series. Uh, and 
it it just it just the whole thing doesn't make sense. I mean, this mm-hmm. is LeBron's fifteenth season, and yeah, he, he's just doing things we've never seen before. And right. you, you think eventually he's just going to crap out and just fall apart on the floor, but he never seems to. I mean, the fact yeah. that he got cramps was even kind of crazy, but uh, just uh, just a ridiculous series. Um, at times, almost hard to watch. I mean, you know, Lance Stevenson is such a punk, and you know that the, yeah. there were such weird moments in the series and uh there were moments where the offenses were really clicking then moments where nobody could hit the broad side of a barn i mean Mm -hmm. it it was a really weird series all the way around uh breaking down game sevens here in the eastern conference uh inside the cheap seats john lauder christian heimel with you here on a monday april 30th uh, on the phmedia.com spreaker google play stitcher itunes you name it uh you can find us please uh, listen rate review and tell us how great we are um (laughs) Yeah. Or how Again, or not, you know. You or, tell yeah, us, whatever. Yeah, you know. Um, now we're going to talk more about, uh, you know, the the semifinals coming up in the in the next segment. But I, I yeah, this Cleveland Toronto series is going to be weird because yeah. Toronto is going to be better rested. They have a way better backcourt. Mm-hmm. Yet it's Toronto and it's LeBron James. So I, I feel like everything I just said is neutralized by the things I said after the first thing. So uh, that's going to be a weird series. Want to talk about Milwaukee and Boston? Obviously, that was a really good series as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, if Boston had had Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving, they probably would have swept Milwaukee, but uh, they didn't. And they also probably would be the number one seed in the East, and it wouldn't even be close. But right, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, give credit to the Bucks. I mean, yeah, Giannis is really, really good. I'm not even going to attempt the last name because it's you know I'm tired. <laughs> uh, Eric Bledsoe really good. Middleton really good. I mean, 77 of Milwaukee's 96 points in Game 7. And to be honest with you, they really were only outplayed in the first quarter. Boston right. outscored them 30-17 to 17 in the first quarter, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, but Terry Rozier played well all, all season, uh, all season, all series, 26 points, 5 of 8 from 3 in Game 7. Uh, and look, you know, give the Celtics credit. They're gritty, they're tough. they got the best coach in the league that's not Greg Popovich or Steve Kerr. Uh, and, you know, they held on despite, Again, not having their two best players who they haven't had for months. So, uh, you know, but but Milwaukee's got some nice pieces, too. I mean, this guy, Pronti, oh, definitely. I, doubt, I doubt he's going to be the coach moving forward, but um, they've got some nice pieces, and, and they showed it. But, um, you know, Boston able to move on, and now they have to deal with Philly, which should be interesting. Yeah, it should be a lot. Of, and this is where, you know, the main reason I look at this, so I think the Celtics won this series for one reason and one reason only. Um, and when I look at the series and I go to game five and I look at the box score for game five, um, Giannis had, uh, that was one of his rougher games. He had 16 right. points, 10 rebounds, nine assists. I mean, rough. He almost had a triple double. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, that was the return of Marcus smart in game yeah. five and his defense is astronomical in terms of, yeah, what it so means, yeah. What it means to that backcourt to have Marcus Smart there to be able to limit guys, you know, like again, right. I mean, that game five, you had, I mean, Jabari Parker actually played, which you know was was nice for him. It's good for him to show up and and you know touch a basketball again. <laughs> um, but you know, Chris Middleton went off, of course, in that game. But other than that, I mean, Marcus Smart. His defense that he plays is so tremendous for this team. It gets that second unit going as well, and he can handle the point guard, which is what's really, really important. Um, and, and for him to be back and playing like that was huge for them. I know it went seven games, but, uh, I mean, home court advantage was there for, for Boston, and we, we can talk about how much it doesn't really matter because it's still the same dimensions and all that stuff. But for, for Smart, it was huge for him to be able to do that, and that's what's going to make this Philadelphia series really interesting because he's going to have to go up against Ben Simmons almost the entire series if Boston's going to have a chance. Yeah, Ben Simmons is like a foot taller than him, though, so I'm not sure how that's yeah, I mean, go, No, I know, but, but like, <laughs> I, it, you've got to guard. He's their best on-ball defender, and, and you know that's Simmons true. is bringing it up, so he's he's got to be the guy. Well, Jalen Brown's improved defensively this yes. year. I feel like he's going to have to have some minutes, too. But, yeah, Smart's really, really good defensively. Uh, but look, I mean, you know, Boston's relying on Jason Tatum, who's like 12 years old, uh, <laughs> you know, Rogier, a, a guy yeah. that, you know, I don't, I don't even know if Terry Rogier's mom knew who he was, uh, you know, Al, Al People Horford. in Louisville are going to be a little upset with you on that one. 
Terry Terrible. Rozier had a great career for Louisville. I know he did, but I, whatever. <laughs> uh, so what? Um, Eric Bledsoe knew who he was. That's all that matters. That's, that's right. Eric Bledsoe. <laughs> God, whatever. Uh, yeah, Eric Bledsoe's quit on like four teams already. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, Horford obviously had a really good game seven. But they're all going to have to play ridiculous and out of their minds again if they're going to beat Philly because I don't see who's defending Embiid. I don't care how good a defender Marcus Smart is. I don't know who's defending Ben Simmons. Yeah. And um, this is going to be so difficult for them because yeah. you, you look at up and down the roster for Philadelphia and there is just it, it it feels like a mismatch at every single spot. It yeah. really does, because, I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at it and I'm going who like like you said, who's going to guard and beat like Al Horford go away like just Matt Baines like like are we are we serious with those two guys? Uh, th- are those going to be the ones uh there's there's some other dude whose name I can't you know even attempt to spell for Boston that randomly plays when Al Horford's not. Um, hang on, I, Gershon Yabusele. Like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, sure, exactly. Um, Greg Monroe is apparently getting paid by the Celtics. I mean, he's no. Like, there's just so much on this team that when you look at it, it's it's just oh my gosh, like every single. Position. A lot of smoke and mirrors. Yes, they're doing, and, and and this just furthers the point that Brad Stevens oh, is the the next great. If he's not already there, he's the next great coach in the NBA. It's it just sure. proving what he did in this past series. So it, it's going to be really strange. It's going to be interesting. We're going to talk a little bit more about it here in just a little bit. Uh, when we return, we're also going to tell you uh, there there's some issues in Oklahoma City. Um, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, so many issues. Uh, with Oklahoma City, and um, I, I don't know how you feel, John, but I think it revolves around the one guy who's probably staying in Oklahoma City, uh, but we're going to get into that in just a little bit. John Lauder, Christian Heimler here with you in the cheap seats on the Public House Media Network. This is Ryan Pierce, host of Completely Serious here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Completely Serious, where we talk about sports and have fun with great guests. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Completely Serious. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Back inside the cheap seats here on the Public House Media Network. John Motor and Christian Heimel with you on Monday, April 30th, 2018. A reminder to follow us on Twitter. You can follow Christian at Chris Heimel. That's C-H-R-I-S-H-E-I-M-A-L-L. You can follow me on Twitter at John underscore Lauder. That's J-O-N underscore L-A-U-D-E-R. A reminder to visit our Facebook page um, and answer the poll question, which we're going to get to here uh, just in a couple of minutes, and also go to the phmedia.com, check out the store, buy a lot of stuff, give us money, because we need it. Um, so let's get to the uh, <laughs> the semifinals of the NBA. Um, we'll go for the Western Conference first. Um, obviously, they're they're underway already. And which, by the way, I hate that. I'm sorry. I hate that. Like, you hate that, huh? I, I can't. Like, why does, why does another series get to start even though – they're not all completely done yet. Like I understand it's the Western Conference and they're not waiting for an opponent. I get that, but like, if everything is done, we can start it early. But like, there's a game seven going on, followed by a game one. Nobody cares about game one. It's game seven. No. That's what everybody cares about. So like, how many people actually watch Warriors Pelicans when they were no. watching instead of watching Celtics uh, Bucks? Same with yesterday with Cavs. Like it's it's dumb. That's that's just dumb to me. So. No, I, I agree. Uh, but not surprisingly, Houston's up 1-0. Golden State's up 1-0. Yeah. Not really a shocker. Um, nope. Rockets and the Warriors have been the two best teams all year. Not really expecting them to lose. Uh, Pelicans, they just don't have enough to match up with the Warriors. I mean, even without Steph Curry, uh, who if I'm Golden State, I don't play him a single game until the Western Conference Finals unless you absolutely need him and you're not going to because you annihilated New Orleans without him. 
Um, mm. I, I mean, look, they're like an all-star team. I mean, I, 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 I'm almost tired of saying this over and over and over and over again because what else can you say about a team that's got Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green on it, and you don't even need Steph Curry because you're so ridiculous? Um, I, you know, the Pelicans are, you know, a couple of years earlier than expected. Nobody mm-hmm. thought they'd beat the Blazers anyway, um, and here they are after a sweep, and now they're probably going to get sweeped here. Uh, yeah. swept here so um you know not a real shocker there and as good as utah was in the first round and as good as donovan mitchell was in the first round christian i houston's just so yeah, much better yeah. oh, and oh. I, I i you know it would not shock me if both of these series were were done in four or five games i the rockets and the warriors are just you know the cream of the crop and they're just better than everybody else yeah because i mean listen it's it's one thing for ricky rubio to play really really well against you know an oklahoma city team that literally um, has holes defensively. Um, they yes. they don't they don't play defense. And Harden, as much as we love his offensive ability, he actually will play some defense. And Chris Paul, he's at that age where it's more imperative for him to play defense. Um, yep. And and the fact that the Rockets actually have a big man as well, um, you know, the, I, I don't see either of these going five. I did think it was kind of interesting though to hear Clay Thompson talk after uh, Game One about how tiring the pace was against New Orleans. Because uh, I mean, Clay's Clay's a fit dude. Like he's in r- very yeah. well conditioned. Um, a lot of people think he's one of the best conditioned guys in the league. Um, and for him to say, you know, he was more tired in that game one than he was in any game during the series against San Antonio. Um, I mean, that that says a lot, you know. And, and so maybe if you can get to their legs, who knows? You might be able to steal a game there. But I, I agree with you. I think both those series end rather quickly. Yeah, and it makes no sense because the Warriors play so fast anyway, so I don't really know what he's talking about, number one. <laughs> number two, this Pelicans team at the beginning of the year were like quickstand. I mean, it was Cousins and yeah. you know Anthony yeah. Davis, and let's go back and forth on who's going to post up, and let's use you know all 24 seconds of the shot clock every single possession. Mm-hmm. Then Cousins gets hurt. And then, you know, they're now just chucking up threes with Holiday and Miritich, and it's a whole different team. Yeah. I do wonder what this series would look like uh, if they had DeMarcus Cousins. I would give credit to the writer if I could think of who it was, but I don't remember. Somebody, I'm pretty sure it was on The Athletic, mentioned, you know, what would this series be like if DeMarcus Cousins was playing? Because yeah. even though, yes, it would slow down the Pelicans, the only real lineup where they'd have any sort of advantage would be Miritich, Cousins, and Davis. And, of course, they don't have that because Cousins isn't playing. Um but yeah, I found that so weird that Thompson was talking about pace of play when the yeah. Warriors score like 190 points yeah, a game. They, they, that they, made no sense yeah. they ranked fifth weird. in the league this year, apparently, in possessions per game, as opposed to uh, you know New Orleans, which had like 1.4 possessions more than them. So yeah, I, I don't. But just it, and that has a lot to say about San Antonio and, and this this slow it down style that they actually play instead. Right. So, um, but in the Eastern Conference here, I mean, you've got two series that realistically could be toss-ups when you think about it. However, yeah. you know, considering what we've seen in the Eastern Conference already, however, when I look at it, t- to me, th- these are two series that if they b- if they go six, I'll be surprised just because who does Cleveland have that's going to, or who does Toronto have that's going to slow down LeBron James? No and one. does Boston have anybody that can slow down anybody on, on Philadelphia? Like, Philadelphia just looks like a dominant team. Yeah, and, and you... <laughs> Uh, again, who's going to cover Simmons? Right. Who's going to cover Embiid? Who's going to cover Saric? I, I don't know. Even I mean, JJ Redick. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, Marcus Smart can't cover four different people, so um, I, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Boston's going to have to shoot the lights out. Jason Tatum's going to have to play like he's 29, not 19. Um, you know, and then Terrible if they don't have Jalen Brown, I mean, yeah. you know, with the hamstring. Yeah, I. I just don't see how Philly doesn't win this in five. On the other side, I actually do think if I had to pick, you know, one team to to upset, and right. it, it sounds dumb because Toronto's the one seed, I think they've got a better <laughs> shot just because of Lowry and DeRozan. They're just so much better in the backcourt. I mean, LeBron started at point guard in game seven. I mean, I, yeah. like, the Cavs don't have guards. J.R. <laughs> Smith is a train wreck. Corver's more of a small forward. They both uh, have max contracts. Right, yeah, right. Clarkson and Hood disappear all the time. George Hill's got the back of like an 87-year-old man. So yeah. they, they don't really have a backcourt. So that's a huge advantage, and yet it's Toronto, and every year they blow it. So yeah. Um, yeah. unless they can, you know, 
do like a Nancy Kerrigan on LeBron, I don't <laughs> see how they can, um, you know, take down the Cavs. I'd like to see it, but I, yeah, I, I feel like we've got a collision course for Cleveland, Philly, and then Houston, Golden State. Which, by the way, Adam Silver would be dancing on tables because, of course, he would. That's the best matchup you could possibly get. The only other one that would have been better would have been Boston if they were fully healthy, and of course they're right. not, which is why they probably won't win. So yeah. uh, great matchups. The NBA is in a really good spot with that if it goes down that way. Mm-hmm. Um, though, of course, you know things could go really crazy, and it could be Utah, New Orleans, and Toronto, and Boston, and then nobody would watch which, except I mean, for it, you and everybody yeah, in Boston. Exactly. <laughs> you know, pretty much. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I mean, you need at least one of those teams, you know. I yeah, know I mean, but that, that, that's and that's the thing, you know. Like as much as we hate talking about the Warriors and hate talking about Cleveland, we're watching because we want to see them lose. But sure, as course. soon as they lose, we're not going to watch. So we kind of yeah, want, we're true. watching to see them win. Like we like right. it's it's ridiculous. So, um, well, John, I mean, you know. We're in the cheap seats here. I, I'm going to do a reset here, by the way, is what we call this before I, I go into this next one, is when we don't have a clever segue, we do what's called a reset and just move nice. on. Nice. Um, such a radio yeah. professional. Letting you guys behind the curtains here in the cheap seats. Um, you're on the cheap seats, in the cheap seats on Public House Media. Christian Heimel and John Lauder here with you on this Monday, April 30th, 2018, talking to NBA playoffs. Uh, but there is one team that is no longer in the playoffs, and there are two guys who might be leaving that team, potentially, Oklahoma City is in a lot of trouble. The Carmelo Anthony, Paul George, Russell Westbrook experiment certainly did not go the way that they were expecting. Um, The OK3 party, as as they called it down there, uh, with the arrival of Paul George, it was... Um, disappointing, I think, is the best way to say it. It was awkward. Awkward, disappointing, and then when they get knocked out of the playoffs, you kind of start to wonder what this means. Carmelo Anthony saying there's absolutely no shot. He's going to go to take a bench role in this one remaining year he has uh, with Oklahoma City here. He does have the option to opt out, by the way. Um, And then the question is if Paul George is going to actually leave now that he will become an unrestricted free agent. So uh, this is a very, very difficult time for a franchise that was really, really embraced when it showed up, had Kevin Durant, They had Russell Westbrook. They had James Harden. I mean, and and they're starting to feel, John, I I know this is a little, might be strange for some people to say, but they're starting to feel like the Los Angeles Clippers when they had, you know, Blake Griffin and Chris Paul and everybody else there just couldn't figure out a way to get it done despite having some of the best young talent in the game. Well, the thing is, the Thunder had three of the best 10 players in the league, and it was too early, and they didn't know it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so they traded James Harden for like a you know a, a, a pile of basketballs and a grilled cheese sandwich. Yep. Um, and then it was the you know Westbrook Durancho who's going to shoot more, who's going to do weird shade on social media. Um, you know, then Durant leaves to go to the Warriors because you know God forbid you want to do it yourself. Um, and you know, look, I, I gave a lot of credit to Westbrook. I still feel this way. He wanted to stay in Oklahoma City. He wanted to keep building. Uh, he easily could have left. Um, but you know, he's such a weird player. He might be like the best worst player ever or the worst (laughs) best player because he's so singularly talented in like all the wrong ways. Like, yeah, like he's averaged a triple double two years in a row. And yet everybody who knows anything about basketball knew that in both seasons, Oklahoma City had no shot yeah. to win a championship. Literally no chance at all. Well, it, the weird part with this team was they were they were an AAU team that couldn't figure it out. They were right. literally they were an AAU team that had no idea what they were doing together. And it no. took them it took them forever. And when they actually did get it right, you want to know what it was because of? It was because Russell Russell Westbrook said, "Screw this. This is my team. I'm taking over." When Russell Westbrook plays at the top of his game and takes over and turns into you know the alpha on that floor, Oklahoma City is very good. The problem is, he's told he's got to you know dish it off to to Carmelo to get his shots, dish it off to Paul George and let him make something happen. Like there's almost too much going on and too many egos on that floor. And and I'm just gonna flat out say it. I think it's Russell Westbrook's problem. I think it's him. I really do. Yeah. I, I, now, granted, it probably started with ownership and saying, you know, when they traded away Harden, um, and but then Durant just saying, listen, you know, you got to work as part of a team. You can't be the showman all the time. 
that 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 is to me what has made that's what in, in my opinion has made Houston so impressive is that Chris Paul, after being the guy for a franchise in L.A. in the number two, you know, basically media market in sports, for yeah. him to basically back off and say, "All right, James, it's your squad," like that that was a huge ego check for Chris Paul. Now, granted, the age helps, but I think that's the issue with Russell Westbrook is that they put together two guys, two really quality shooters on that team, and Russ said, nope, I'm just going to handle it. And, and I think that's a really... Uh, that the, the, the ego check comes with Russell Westbrook first. Instead of inviting someone into his house and saying, hey, this is how we're going to do it, he needs to say, oh, you're a guest in my house. How can we make things more comfortable for you? And he's not doing that. No. I mean, there were moments where, you know, George and Westbrook played really well together this season. There, there was mm-hmm. a stretch, I forget exactly when it was, um, where they played really well together, and they looked good. Um, but I don't know. And to me, Carmelo was just sort of a throw-in. He, he was never really somebody that, that matched up well with the rest of the team. Um, and look, he had a terrible season, and he came out today and was like, I, I'm, you know, I'm coming off the bench, ridiculous. Um uh, he's a jerk, and uh, you know, to me, he's he's as big a, an issue as anybody else, as far as I'm concerned. Right. I mean, he listen. He had his head filled the size of Madison Square Garden because the Knicks did nothing to help him as a team, right. so he just became the guy, and it was very difficult for him to leave and and continue to be that guy when he wasn't. You know, and, and that's and that's Mello's issue. Paul George, same type of thing. The guy, big fish in a small pond. And then he went somewhere else where there's a couple of other big fish and didn't know how to coexist. So this is what we talking about. Like I remember, th- this was like um, I'm trying to think. Like remember when the Lakers had like Gary Payton and everybody else, and they're like, oh, this is a super team. They're gonna roll through everything. Yeah, and Carl they, Malone. And, yep, yep, Carl yep. Malone, and they didn't even make the finals. Like it was no. just a, such a disappointment for them. And, and and now I'm not saying that this is the exact same thing, but at some point, the coach and the front office and the star player need to be on the same page as to how things are going to happen. And I don't think I, there's some disc, it, it, there's it's disjointed in Oklahoma City and now it's going to cost them potentially two very talented players here this offseason because Carmelo again if you force him to be a bench player, he'll probably opt out. And yeah. Paul George meanwhile is sitting there looking around going, "Where's a better fit for me?" cuz he's a free agent right. now. And that's true. So, like, where could he end up? Could he – is I mean, L.A., they've been talking about the Lakers. There's been talk about, um, you know, potentially teaming up with LeBron. There's been talks of possibly Houston. San Antonio is an interesting spot, I think, that he – him and LaMarcus Aldridge, with if they are able to convince Kawhi to stay, that'd be interesting. You know, he'd be, he'd be a really fun fit in Philadelphia. I know everybody's talking about LeBron going to Philly, but how about Paul George in Philadelphia? That would That's be true. a lot of fun. You know, yeah, so well, there's there's a bunch of options here, and that is a big problem for Oklahoma City. That twice in four years they're going to lose one of their best young players. It's crazy. Uh, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, we're going to switch things over, move to the NFL. Uh, the NFL draft is over. I was very disappointed that I didn't get to uh, give my two cents before the draft last week, but it's I got okay. plenty of stuff. I'm sure you plenty did. of things uh, to talk about with the draft. Um, I thought the New York area teams did quite well. I know Christian's happy as, for, as a Packers fan. I'm very happy. Um, so we'll break that all down in just a moment here inside the cheap seats. This is Katie, co-host of Coffee with Keith and Katie here on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Coffee with Keith and Katie, where we talk about the adventures of our daily lives and relationships. A new show comes out every Tuesday and Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Coffee with Keith and Katie. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Back in the Jeep seats on this Monday, April 30th. Christian Heimel, John Lauder with you on the Public House Media Network. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, share us with your friends and family. Apple Podcasts, 
Google Play, Spreaker.com, of course, and thephmedia.com, where you can also buy some awesome Cheap Seats gear, help continue to support the show in that way, and, you know, fly that Cheap seat flag high. Do it. Go, you know, reach up really high, maybe throw it over the side of the stadium because, you know, it's that high up and probably hurt something on the way down. So have some fun with it. Whatever you feel like doing. doesn't really matter. What uh, the hell are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Listen, man, I really have no idea what's going Throwing on right flags now. flags over the top of stadiums, you're losing your damn mind, man. I'm, I've, I've lost my mind, exactly. I've you're lost so excited about completely. Saquon Barkley, that's what it oh, is. Oh, see, no, you know what, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But before we do, I want to remind everybody to go to our go to our Facebook page, uh, The Cheap Seats by Public House Media. Vote on our poll question. We talked right. about it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. It's why we're here. It's, it's why right. we work together. Um, that's right. We, uh, we talked about it a little bit um Last segment, but Oklahoma City Thunder are in a lot of trouble here. Potential to lose both Carmelo Anthony and Paul George. So our poll question to you all here on this wonderful Monday is, who is more likely to leave Oklahoma City? Is it Paul George, who is a free agent this summer? Or is it Carmelo Anthony, who is technically still under contract, but does have the ability to opt out and leave if he wants to? So uh, head to our Facebook page, Cheap Seats by Public House Media. Um, I, I, I don't think there's any question that um, it's Paul George probably more likely to leave, but I firmly believe that both probably will yeah, end up leaving. I agree. Yep, hundred percent. So. All right, so let's get to it. The NFL draft over the past four days, which you know is was it four days, three days? Yeah, that's right. They changed it up where you know it yes. now ends on Saturday. So, uh, which is fun. Sure, fine, whatever. Um, <laughs> after the first ten picks, nobody cares. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> unless your team hasn't picked in the top ten, so right. Um. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, I thought, and you know this because I've been on the I've been on the bandwagon for two years. But I love, love that Baker Mayfield went number one because it's so. Aw- I'm sick and tired of hearing everybody call him Johnny Manziel 2.0. He's not Johnny Manziel. He's Russell Wilson. He's Deshaun Watson. He's, oh, uh, he's so talented. And I know it's Cleveland. And I was really kind of, uh, I would have loved for them to have taken Quentin Nelson at number four. I like the Denzel Ward move. He's a Cleveland guy. Um, I thought I thought the Browns played one and four really, really well. Uh, in fact, I'll be honest, John, I think the top ten teams played it, th- their draft picks very well on, on Thursday night in the opening round. Um, uh, sort of. Um, I was stunned, to be completely honest with you, that Cleveland took Mayfield one. Um not, not because I didn't see it coming, because we, you know we heard about it right four hours beforehand, but just because I don't know, I, I really have a hard time taking somebody that short number one, and and I know height yeah. shouldn't matter, but you know Russell Wilson's one in a million, you know Doug Flutie is one in a million, right? Uh, and look, it I agree that it's not fair to compare him to Johnny Manziel. He's infinitely more talented and and not nearly the screw up that Manziel is and was. Um, so that's not fair. Uh, but I, I just can't believe they, they didn't take Darnold. I, it stuns me. And it, it, if I was the GM, I would have taken Darnold. But, you know, nobody wants my opinion, so I'm not a GM. <laughs> um, as for the fourth pick, I would have taken Nick Chubb, not Denzel Ward. Uh, you could have had Ward further down. Yeah. Um, Ward's a very good player, no doubt, but he's a little undersized. Chubb is an absolute monster. Oh, yeah. And to have Chubb and Garrett on on opposite sides would have been insane. Again, mm-hmm. they needed a cornerback. Ward's a great player, uh, but I, I do think they could have played that a little bit better. Um, the pick in the top ten, that there were two picks that really bothered me in the top ten. Um, Josh Allen at seven. Uh, I know Buffalo needs a quarterback, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure how, how I feel about Allen. Um, and I, I think there's a chance he could have been there, maybe not at 12, but you know, maybe they could have traded with somebody else. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then Mike McGlinchey at nine. I mean, I, that's a real reach. I, he's nowhere near to me as good an offensive lineman as Nelson was. No, um, not at all. And I, I, I understand San Francisco wants to, you know, protect their, you know, golden you goose. Know, million dollar guy. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Um, you could have had McGlinchey further down. I would have traded down, try to get more picks. Um, so those were the ones that bothered me, but, uh, I thought both New York teams did a real nice job. Yep. Um, if I'm the giants, I, I, I've really vacillated back and forth on this. I mean, you know, we were both in agreement that Saquon Barkley, you know, was, was probably the right pick. The more I'm thinking, you know, once Cleveland didn't take Darnold though, I did start to think maybe the Giants should have done that. Uh, the Jets, he, you know, he just falls into their lap. If he ends up being a great player, the Giants are going to look stupid. But 
at the same time, if Saquon Barkley, you know, rushes for 2,000 yards and the Giants win the Super Bowl, it won't matter. But Here's, what, what, made, the, what made the Barkley pick better to me is what they did on Friday night when they drafted Will Hernandez in the second yeah, round. Yeah, that's that, true. That, to me, is what made it better because now, uh, again, I told you I I've been, I want Quentin Nelson so bad because, in my opinion, he is the most surefire Hall of Fame talent in this class. Yeah, probably um, is. And, and I wanted – and their offensive line is terrible. It's old, you know, even with the addition of future Hall of Famer Nate Soldier. Like, it's old. Um, um, and Eric Flowers is an embarrassment to, oh God, to the position. Was... Um, so I would have thought that you get Quentin Nelson, you solidify that offensive line, and then you can get a Darius Geis or a Sony Michelle or a Nick Chubb or excuse me, uh, Nick Chubb later in the in the, in, and and you still got your talented running back. I mean, look at what again, you know, Joe Thomas, you know, is a Hall of Famer at offensive line and played for the Cleveland Browns for crying out loud. So yeah. offensive line is huge. Uh, but when they got Will Hernandez, I was a, I was very very happy with that. That makes Barkley a lot better. It makes Eli a lot better. And now, you know, the really interesting part is just how much, um, you know, they have set Eli Manning up for success these next two years. So, yeah. the, and and it really, yeah. it, it it's the truth. The Giants are set up right now to contend for a Super Bowl for the last two years of Eli Manning's current contract. Well, the other thing is they just have so much confidence in Eli, and I I, I don't agree with that. But, um, you know, this was the same guy that they took out for Geno Smith. So, I mean, I know that was a different regime, but that had yeah. to also come from ownership too. So uh, they, they, they better hope that he's, you know, playoff Eli and not, you know, regular right. season. I'm going to throw a bunch of interceptions, Eli, because <laughs> um, I don't care how well Saquon Barkley runs the football if you've got a, shl- you know, a schlub – throwing the ball uh yeah. you're going to be in trouble but yeah you know i obviously ingram's really good beckham shepherd we know the deal yeah. um you know they're a talented team offensively we'll see if they'll be better defensively theoretically they should be with ogletree um you know you know sort of leading that linebacking core uh, looking at the jets real quick they didn't actually have a lot of picks but sam darnold was a was a no-brainer and yeah. You know, they've yeah. gotten so lucky. I mean, they just keep getting these guys falling into their picks. I mean, uh, you know, w- uh, Williams and then um, Pryor the last two years at, mm-hmm. at, you know, the number six pick. Not not Pryor. Um, what's his name? Uh, Jamal Adams. Yeah. No, yeah. Pryor was a, a complete bust. Um, Williams <laughs> and then Adams um, the, the last two years, both at the sixth pick. And then Sam Darnold this year at three. Um definitely didn't think he would be there and they also uh cleveland stopped them from taking mayfield so uh they should be thanking cleveland right now that's all i have to say about they probably that. should be you know i mean that's and, and that's the and biggest thing, the biggest thing for them is they mayfield got a guy in new york would have been a disaster sorry that's just how I he would have that. no you're you're i think you're absolutely right he he would have um but it, it's it's one of those things for the jets where like and, and this is so i was actually in the new york area this past weekend um at a wedding and i was listening to new york sports radio for the first time in a while and the ama- the excitement. Hey, Princess is coming back, Christian. Oh, Jesus! Stop. We're gonna just. <laughs> you know how funny it is to me how many how many other people on the air at WFAN are making fun of the fact that Frances is coming back. Oh, it's it's the funniest thing in the world I to me. It. It's great. Um, it's like how much Boomer Esiason is just ripping oh. them apart on the air live. His own employer. It's awesome. Um, That's enough about him. Let's talk. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, the excitement from Jets fans. Is something yeah. that like that like that's what Cleveland needs. That's what New York. That's what the Jets need. You need that kind of excitement. And Sam Darnold, I've never seen this many people excited for a guy to hold a clipboard because they know that in a year, maybe even not a year, he's going to be their franchise quarterback. They hope, right. you know. Yeah. And and, and yep. so the very smart move by them. They got it right. They really, you know, were kind of. It was gift wrapped to him, like you said. So uh, good on them. Good on the Jets for for not you know screwing it up. So that being said, I will always to my till my dying day rip on USC quarterbacks. I don't care how good Carson Palmer was before the injury. USC and, and, quarterbacks and have been bad. Get hurt. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, John he's David Booty, Matt Leinart, yeah. butt terrible. fumble. Like there, Matt there have Castle, been all terrible. Yeah, all of them are terrible. So, hopefully Sam Darnold won't be. Um, Arizona Rosen was a steal at ten. That's all I'm going to say about oh, yeah. that. Love that. It's you know what else pick. was a steal? The the steal that uh, like from the from the first day, and, and I've talked to a couple of different people. 
The fact that Minka Fitzpatrick fell out of the top ten. Oh, and the fact that Derwin James Derwin fell James? away to 17. Oh. That, that's my steal right there. I mean, 100%. I, I 100% Crazy. agree with you there. And I love the fact that the Patriots went out and got Sony Michelle. I thought that was awesome for them. Yeah. That was well yeah. done. But. Absolutely. Um, just a couple other things that stood out. I mean, as a Packers fan, I'll talk about it real quick. Uh, I, I thought um, their new GM, whose last name I can't pronounce, did a really nice job. Um, two great corners in Alexander and, and Josh Jackson. Um, they were able to get an extra first round pick because New Orleans, they're dumb. Um, you know, plus got some extra wide receiver help. Um, I really don't understand why New Orleans gave up an extra first round pick to move up to take, you know, Marcus Davenport. Yeah. Yeah. I don't the know pass rush, but they probably could have got him further down in yeah. the first round. And I think everybody thought they were going to take Lamar Jackson. That's what I thought. And mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, nice. You know, somebody to back up Drew Brees, somebody to take over. Sean Payton would be the perfect coach for him, and then they take Davenport and ruin everything. Yeah. Um, yep. But then Baltimore ends up with Jackson. I think that's perfect because, you know, Joe Flacco, you're terrible now, so go away. Yep. Um, also, Carolina and Atlanta, great value late in the, the mm-hmm. first round with the wide receivers, Moore and Ridley. Um, but honestly, I, I think the best two picks in the top ten um, were five and six. Chubb to the Broncos, Nelson to the Colts. Yeah. Again, they, like, like it's it's hard to call Quentin Nelson a steal at number six, but I, I still firmly believe he should have been number one overall. He yeah, should have been I in mean, the top two. Those two guys more than likely end up being the two best players out of this class. So, yeah. um, and you know what? The other nice thing is neither of these teams overthought it. I'm, I'm tired of this. Right. Yeah. Pick the damn guy. You know, John. You know, John Elway didn't do something stupid and you mm-hmm. know draft Mason Rudolph or something. I mean, you know, don't be dumb. Just take right. the best player available, and they did it, and it was yep. smart. Yep, they um, did. Yeah, I mean that, that's you know, and then just unlike the Cowboys, reasons. who by the way had their best, re- arguably their best receiver ever, retire on them and didn't even know about it to be able to draft his replacement. But yeah, that whole Witten thing is weird. Very, very strange. The timing of and, it could not have been worse. No, or hilarious. But, yeah, you know, yeah, hilarious. So well, funny. We hate the Cowboys, <laughs> but yeah, really weird. And then at one point, I heard rumors that they were talking about him possibly calling Monday night games and still playing for the Cowboys, uh, which yeah, no. would be amazing. <laughs> you imagine if Dallas had a Monday night game and he got to play in the game with a microphone on? Just, he, he's he's, he's mic'd up while, while they're on defense. He's, he's oh, doing, God, you know, so awesome. be oh, hilarious. It'd be great. And then, and then Tony Romo comes back. Oh, it'd be great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, two best stories real quick from the draft. Ryan Shazier coming up to announce. That was awesome. Oh, incredible. And then the Edmonds brothers, first time ever that two brothers, I think were picked in the same draft for getting the first round. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, um, I forget which Griffin it was. Shaquem being Griffin. Drafted by, thank you, Shaquem. Yep. Um, being drafted by the Seahawks, where his brother Shaquille is. Awesome. Um, really great stuff. He was drafted way too late. He's a stud, but, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, the draft was great. I, I've always been a big draft guy. I'm excited to see how these players develop. Um and yeah, especially in New York City with Barkley and Darnold. I mean, this was arguably the most important draft in the history of New York football. So, uh, yeah, you know, agreed. rarely are these two teams ever drafting this high at the same time. Um, so we'll see. I mean, you know, obviously it's going to take a while to determine who won, who lost. You know, hopefully both teams win. We'll see. But crazy. I agree with you. This is the first time, honestly, this is the first time since the Giants drafted, um, you know, Philip Rivers and then traded for Eli Manning that I was anxious and nervous about a draft. So <laughs> it's been a very long time since I was literally sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, we were actually Christ. driving and my girlfriend goes, she, we're, we're, we're lis- I'm listening to it. She goes, please don't have an overreaction no matter who they take. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, you got to understand, if they take a quarterback, I'm jumping out the window right now in the middle of the highway. <laughs> I don't care. So, you know, fortunately they didn't. I'm still here. Yeah, and we can. Yeah, we could talk sports. So uh, we're going to talk Major League Baseball when we get back. We're also going to give you our Mojo Monday. Don't forget to go to our uh, Facebook page, Cheap Seats by Public House Media. Vote on the poll question. More likely to leave the Oklahoma City Thunder this summer, Paul George or Carmelo Anthony. Uh, So should be interesting there uh, in that one to see how people think. Uh, Again, George is an actual free agent. Anthony... um, you know, take a little bit. Yeah, he, he, he'd have to opt out here on that one. So when we come back onto the diamond where, um, the, oh, Jesus, God, the Yankees are just, they're so good. Oh, <laughs> they're so good, and it's starting to really bother me. All right. Yeah, they're good. 
They're very, very good. And then also some really, really cool stuff uh, from the world of baseball if you didn't get a chance to see it on Sunday. We'll talk about it all here this morning. April 30th, you're in the cheap seats on the Public House Media Network. I'm the Greg. And I am Dave Show. We host the Greg and Dave Show on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out our show, The Greg and Dave Show, where we talk about strange, bizarre, and sometimes just downright quirky news stories that you may not have heard about. A new show comes out every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And hey, thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. segments down one left to play with here inside the cheap seats on the public house media network john motor christian heimel with you uh time to get into some major league baseball um you, yankees christian I, they're really good at baseball yeah, i'm not yeah. sure if you've noticed um they've gotten they've gotten average, really really good yeah they're averaging about a thousand runs a game um mm-hmm. though yesterday they decided to just win two to one <laughs> boring um but anyway um cc sabathia his era is 1.71 uh, which is uh, about the weight of his one leg. So <laughs> that's um, just complete and total insanity that yeah. he's pitching that well. Uh, he's been incredible. And, I mean, you know, Didi Gregorius, he's got 10 home runs. Dude. I mean, he had, I, he had he, four he, home runs this week. Four home runs and 10 for, RBI last week. Yeah, he's on pace at 70 home runs. So yeah. um, the Yankees have been crazy. I mean, they're 18-9 and nine now. And that huge lead that the Red Sox had is down to two games, yep. which I'm sure just gives you so much unbridled oh, joy. Man, I'm so um, happy. I know you're thrilled. They go 17 um, and two, and then they've gone three and six the last ten, whatever the heck it is. They got no hit by the Athletics, man. What the hell? Like what's going yeah, on? Sean and I, I know He's, he had. Listen, Dallas Braden so threw a perfect game. Okay, let's be like it just happens. Cool. It happens in Oakland and now for whatever he, like, reason. You know, works for Bleacher Report and lives in his mom's basement or something. So, yeah, so. Um, yeah it's true. Baseball's weird. Anyway, yep. <laughs> um, but look, I mean, Boston's still 13 games above 500. It's not like, you know, they're terrible or anything. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that, oof, that's going to be A couple of bad re- games, a couple of bad games against Tampa Bay. But the Rays were streaking. I mean, the, again, we've talked about this. You're going to go through these stretches. It's just who has yeah. more of the better ones. Uh, that's right. that's the biggest question. It's going to be a great and, race all year. Yeah, it, it, especially in that American League East. And as we've talked about and as everybody knows, baseball is better when it's the Red Sox and Yankees that are this talented. I will say this. Here's what's kind of in, intriguing to me when I watch this. Um, I didn't realize how good Arizona had been playing at one point. They had won, I think, they've won like 17 series, or like nine series in a row, something like that, to start the season, uh, which has only been done once by the 1907 Cubs which is impressive. I didn't think that the Dodgers were going to be still this bad at the end of April. Um, you know, the NL Central is really fun to watch. I don't yeah. I don't know I don't know how much, you know, Pittsburgh Pirates baseball you're watching uh lately, but uh, outside of the Yeah, outside of the Cincinnati Reds who fired their manager 18 games in, um every, the Pirates, Cubs, Cardinals and Brewers are all within two games of each other right now. Like, this is a lot of fun in the Central, and it's similar to that in the National League when you look at how good Atlanta and Philadelphia are, are, are right now. So the National League has some fun teams to watch. Not saying the American League doesn't, obviously, with the Sox and Yankees and then, of course, the defending champs, the Houston Astros, but the National League has some great young talent, and it's a lot of fun to watch these guys play ball. Yeah, and, and by the way, you know, firing a manager 18 games into a season is like firing a football head coach in the third quarter of the first game. But, I mean, so Brian Price, like, it, it was his fifth year, but it was his fifth it. year. It was his fifth year, and they didn't like the way it started. I'm not really that surprised. Don't fire him before so. the season starts. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm Terrible not disagreeing with you. Four years, the Reds are garbage. I'm not going to disagree with you here. I'm not. You're I right. wish you would, damn it, because we're getting fired up now. <laughs> I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to disagree with you on that one. But I will tell you this though. Um, I, I love. I don't know if you saw this, but um, the Dodgers are are obviously struggling. Um, oh yeah, a, like a lot. Um, <laughs> they're they're just wow. Um, it's to the point where uh, Dave Roberts benched the reigning Rookie of the Year because he wasn't yeah. hustling on his double. 
How he awesome is that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I love that. I wish more people did that. I really do. Because every time a guy, like every time David Ortiz rolled one over and just like took eight steps out of the dugout and went, eight, eight steps down the line and went to the dugout because he knew he was going to get thrown out, like, like, I get it. Your job is to hit the ball far. But, like, at least hustle, you know, do something. Like, that. that's, I love that, like, Cody Bellinger, who is known as one of, like, the best hustlers in the game, like, gets benched for not hustling. I find that awesome. I also find it hilarious because Dave Roberts is clearly getting fed up with life right now in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, well, look, I mean, you know, if, if you had told me, you know, 25-odd games in that, you know, the Mets, the Pirates, and the Diamondbacks will be leading their respective divisions in the National League, I would think yeah. you were on some drug so exactly uh, it's been weird to start the season um and the other thing i find interesting is that dd gregorius and manny machado are having ridiculous starts to the season and they could be teammates next year just no just stop that because i swear to god (laughs) john do you understand that the yankees legitimately have the opportunity to have stanton judge Mm -hmm. and bryce harper in the same outfield correct one of them would have to play center field and that's never going to happen as well as having this, you know, no, newfound. What are you? What are you talking about? They'd be yeah, fine. Exactly. As well as this newfound Didi Gregorius, Gary Sanchez, and Manny Machado on the infield. <laughs> I'm gonna go throw with, up uh, now. I'll, I'm Glaber, literally gonna go throw up. With Glaber Torres at second. I'm gonna throw up. Just it's. <laughs> oh my god. And that just gave though. me that little. Oh, gave me ulcers right there. That's yeah, you just scary. puked in your mouth a little bit, didn't you? <laughs> but, no, but, hey, I did, did something else, something. but yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, but hey, I've got, I've got something that'll that'll put a smile on your face. What do you got? Um, so right now, thirty three different starting pitchers have earned run averages below three. I love that. Thirty. That's awesome. Three. Now, let me give you some of these illustrious names, because <laughs> when I looked at this, I, I was like, you like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, yeah. it's insane. So Johnny Cueto has a .84 ERA. Love it. And the Giants are garbage, so I don't really get that. Um, and then you go through this list, and you've just got some weird names. Like, I don't know who Trevor Williams is. Never heard of him. Could just be some random homeless guy. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the best name... Is number thirty one, big sex, big sexy. Oh, big sexy Bartolo Barry Colon. Colon. Barry Colon, two eighty seven ERA. Yeah. He's like he's hundred years old. Yeah, he's pitching well. I love it. And and, and it, I, I just find it so interesting where baseball's at right now because you've got you know Mike Trout and Judge and Stanton, mm-hmm. all these guys hitting ridiculous amounts of home runs, and yet we're on pace for another record setting year for strikeouts, and thirty three different pitchers have an ERA. Uh, you know, under three, and we're almost thirty games in. Yeah. So, and every single is, one of those guys, by the way, has an opponent batting average of less than two sixty five. Yeah, it's crazy. That's nuts. That's awesome. I love that. Like, like this is what makes baseball so much fun. You know, is, is the fact that you have these. And, and here's the insane part, John. I mean, 20, I'm looking at some of these 20, twenty pitchers with whips under one. Yeah. Twenty. Yeah, I'm looking at some of these names. And you got Reynaldo Lopez for the White Sox. He hasn't won a game yet. He's 0-2. He's 0-2 <laughs> yeah. in five starts, right. but he's got a 178 ERA. That's Insane. unbelievable. Like, I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Good pitching, to me, is, is what makes baseball great. It really I is. Agree. It's what makes baseball great. So, you're in the cheap seats here on the Public House Media Network. Chris and I will John Lauder with you on this Monday, April 30th, 2018. Thanks so much for listening. Wherever and however you may be doing so, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spreaker.com, of course, thephmedia.com, where you can check us out and get some awesome Cheap Seats gear, a sweatshirt or T-shirt or a coffee mug or something like that, whatever it is that you want. Go and find it there on thephmedia.com. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page, Cheap Seats by Public House Media. Vote on our poll question. More likely to leave the Oklahoma City Thunder this summer, uh, Carmelo Anthony or Paul George. As we like to do every single week, some Mojo Monday, good Mojo, bad Mojo, whoever has it, we'll let you know. John, I'm going to let you lead off here. So I, I, I have to go with Ryan Shazier for good Mojo. Um, it was just so great to see him, uh, you know, walk across that stage with his uh, girlfriend, fiance. I, mm-hmm. I'm not 100% sure of that situation, but um, it was just a really cool moment. 
Um, just just to see him make the pick and uh, just an amazing story. He claims he's going to play football again. I'm kind of hoping he doesn't. Um, yeah, <sighs> because that injury was so horrible. But right. just just awesome to see him walking and talking and functioning. Um, and it, the, that was my good piece of mojo. It was easily the best part of the draft for me. Yeah, it was definitely awesome to see him do that. And you know, as much as I want to see like an Eric Berry type, you know, recovery um, to be able to do that and immediately play again. Uh, I really hope if he does, I hope it's a couple of years from now and not a couple of months from now. So, yeah. um, but you know, uh, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to go a little bad mojo because I found this hilarious. Um, I was debating going good mojo with Didi Gregorius, but I can't give props to the Yankees. So I found a way to spin it negatively um, Love it. as only I can do uh, bad mojo to the angels fans. You've got some of the best young talent out there in you got Angleton Simmons, You've got Zach Cozart, Ian Kinsler, Mike Trout in the outfield, Shohei Otani, who is, uh, by all accounts right now, li- living up to the hype, Albert Pujols at first base, um, and yet you allow uh, a curtain call to a visiting player. Didi Gregorius the other day hit a go-ahead home run in like the 10th inning for the Yankees, and the Yankee fans that infiltrated Anaheim gave him a curtain call. He got a standing ovation on the road. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That is pretty ridiculous. That's one of that those things ridiculous. that, like, if that happened, like, on the road in a, in a basketball game or in a football game, those fans would be tarred and feathered. Oh, my. Like, the fact that the Anaheim Angels, the, the Los Angeles Angels allowed that to happen, where yeah, a, a visiting guy was able to get a standing ovation in your ballpark, and it wasn't for like a perfect game or like a, a, a record home run or something like that. Come on. Yeah, You're better than that. I know it's LA, <laughs> and you don't really care that much about your sports out there, but come on. You're better than that. Yeah, oh, that, 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 that is kind of crazy. Absolutely Insane. brutal. So, uh, especially the Angels are actually, you know, they're not playing great right now, obviously, just getting swept by the Yankees, but they're playing at least a decent amount. Yeah, you know, they're playing. They're playing a solid amount, uh, a, a better brand of baseball than they have the last couple of years. So, yeah. But oh, that was just. I saw that and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me! It was so funny. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, John, good to have you back this week, bud. Glad you're feeling okay. healthy again. Uh, and we're back here talking uh, NBA playoffs and, of course, recapping the NFL draft and uh, all that fun stuff. Going to be a lot more fun stuff coming up later this week on Wednesdays and Fridays show. Don't forget to subscribe to the Cheap Seats by Public House Media on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spreaker.com, and, of course, thephmedia.com. You want to hang out with John and I after the show uh, or any other time, find us on Twitter, John Lauder at J-O-N underscore L-A-U-D-E-R. You can find me uh, at Chris Heimel, C-H-R-I-S-H-E-I-M-A-L-L. Don't forget to check out our poll question on our Facebook page, the Cheap Seats by Public House Media. More likely to leave Oklahoma City, this summer, Paul George, who will be a free agent, or Carmelo Anthony, who would have to opt out before he actually left. I think John and I both in agreement on that one. Most likely Paul, but wouldn't be surprised at all to see both of them out the door in Oklahoma City. We're back again next Monday. Don't forget, uh, you can check the show out on Wednesday and Friday as well. It's been fun. Happy to have you guys all the way up here in the cheap seats on the Public House Media Network.